Good morning, high school students and parents. Uh, my name is Mario. I'm from the financial aid department here at uh, Florida State College, and uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to start talking to you guys about this study called uh, "College Knowledge" by Angela Bell in 2009. Uh, it said that when students asked when when asked about financial aid. Uh, some used to, or a lot of you students had a big knowledge about financial aid in the college and that no matter what grade you're in, you all have a general awareness that financial aid is out there. Uh, it also said that uh, your, you parents and students lack information or have misinformation about financial aid and that, that you guys lack information and have misinformation about financial aid and that you guys aren't aware of, of, of sources of financial aid process, of, of financial aid. Um, it also found that in your guys' sophomore year of college, uh, I'm sorry, of high school, you guys uh, are not active in information gathering about financial aid in college, and that cost and financial aid is, is not of your primary concern. Um, while you guys have access to web and computers, uh, some of you parents and students do not have the, uh, the uh, do not have the knowledge needed to to uh, to properly navigate through a website to gather information about and apply for financial aid. Um, and also, it also said that uh, some of you students know about financial aid and that you guys know that your parents' uh, tax information is needed as part of the process, uh, but that you guys aren't sure how to fill out and submit your application. And that's why today I will be teaching you guys about uh, the, the financial aid, the process of applying for financial aid. I will do so by uh, telling you guys what documents to gather. Uh, I will teach you guys how to apply for my FSA account, and I will also teach you guys how to fill out and submit your application. Uh, now, the documents that you need to gather include your social security card number, because it is very, very important that you guys put in the correct social security number and that your, num and that your name uh, matches the card. Uh, you will also need your driver's license, if you have one. You will need your 2010 W-2 forms, uh, your 2010 income tax records, uh, like your IRS 1040, 1040A, or 1040EZ, uh, you will also, or any foreign tax information that you may have. Uh, you will also need your parents' uh, income tax information if you are independent. Uh, you will need your 2010 untaxed income records. You will need your current bank statements. And you will also need uh, your alien registration or permanent resident card if you are not a resident. Um, after you have gathered all these uh, documents, you will apply for my FSA account. And you will start off by uh, putting in your, your name, your last name, and your email, and your email address. Uh, I'm sorry, your, and your date of birth. Uh, the date of birth must be in a month, date, and four digit year format. And uh, due to children's online privacy, no one under 13 can make an account. Uh, then you will provide a valid email address. Uh, a username uh, and a password. Uh, once you create your actual password, I'm sorry, uh, your password must be between uh, five to twelve characters. It cannot contain any uh, ca any spaces, and it cannot be the same as your username. You will also have to choose a question that the system can ask you if you do forget your password, and an answer to that question. Uh, after you fill out all these requirements, uh, now you have my FSA account, and now comes the fun part, filling out the application and submitting it. Uh, you have three options of doing this. Uh, your first option is the, uh, the uh, FAFSA on the web, which you will have to go to www.fafsa.gov uh, to fill out, and this is the recommended and the fastest way to do it. Uh, your second option is the FAFSA, the PDF FAFSA, which you will have to download at www.studentaid.ed.gov backslash PDF FAFSA. And your third option is the paper FAFSA, which you will have to call this one number. It's the 1-800-4-FED-8 uh, to get the copy of. Um, now, since the uh, FAFSA on the web is the fastest and the recommended way to do it, I'm going to teach you guys how to do it that way. Uh, to do it, you will have to go to the www.fasta.gov website and you will click on the big red button that says start here. Um, you put in your, your name, your date of birth, and your social security number if you're not already signed into your My, FASA, my FSA account. Uh, but before you start filling out the application, let me give you guys some uh, time saving uh, suggestions. Again, you will have to uh, gather all your documents, the, one that, the ones that I just talked about. Uh, you will have to 
apply for a federal student aid pin if you don't already have one. And your parents, parents of those students that are dependents must also apply for a pin if they don't already have one. Uh, you will have to plan how you're going to sign for your uh, FAFSA, whether with a pin or a signature page, which I will talk about in just a few seconds. And you will also have to know, make note of any eligibility requirements or any uh, important deadline dates. Uh, now with the signature page, uh, if you're not signing your FAFSA with a pin, uh, you will have to, you and your parents, if you are dependent, must uh, print out, uh, sign and mail in a signature page uh, within 14 days that you submit your FAFSA application. Uh, now, but, uh, submitting a, a signature page will increase the time that it takes to uh, process your application or it will increase the time that it will take to uh, transmit your application data to any schools that you listed in your application. Now with all that in mind, you go to your questions. You have to fill out any questions that you are required to. Uh, questions uh, 1 through 31, every single applicant must complete. And this section, uh, this section collects any of your personal identifica identification information, uh, like your name, your uh, telephone number, your address, your social security number, and so on. Uh, questions 32 through 50, 57, this is again for every single applicant to complete. Uh, in this section, whether you are dependent or independent, uh, you have to put in your financial information. Uh, questions 58 through 52, these are only for dependent students that answer no to questions 45 through 57. Uh, and in this section, you parents have to fill out and submit your uh, financial information. Uh, questions 93 to 100, only independent students that answered yes to 45, so any questions 45 through 57 must complete. Uh, and in this section, you will have to, uh, you will have to submit your, or provide uh, the number of people that live in your household or the number of college, and the number of college students that live in your household also. Uh, you must provide information about any benefits that you receive like uh, food stamps, uh, free or reduced lunch, uh, or anything related to that. And there was, there's also a question about your employment status. Uh, now, question 101, A through H, you must, this is for school coding and uh, housing plans. And in this section, you will provide 10 schools that you're interested in. And if you are applying on the web, you will complete, you only, you only have to provide one school, at least one school. Uh, now, in this speech, I've taught you guys, you students and parents, the process of applying for financial aid. I did so by telling you guys what documents to gather. Uh, I, I taught you guys how to apply for my FSA account. And I also taught you guys how to fill out and submit your financial aid application. Uh, now, with all this information that I've given you guys today, you guys won't be like any of those other students that lack information or any of those students and parents that aren't sure how to fill out and submit their application. Thank you.